Uh, thank you so much, Chairperson, for the introduction. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here and talk to you about a very important topic, which is very close to my heart. And thank you, organizers, Taya Khan and Dr. Banshi Sabu, sir, uh, for inviting me and giving the opportunity. So uh, before we start, we would like to just, uh, we would ask you to scan this QR code and answer a few questions for us. They are very, you know, you have to just uh, answer in approximation, nothing like exact. So if you please uh, scan the QR code, that would be really awesome. And I'll wait for a couple of seconds uh, before we proceed. The questions are not only relevant for GDM or maternity care, but they are also relevant in diabetes management and uh, chronic disease management. Yeah. So the project that I'm going to talk about is related to GDM and monitoring of GDM. Uh, and the overall objectives were to, to first of all assess if it is at all feasible to monitor patients with uh, GDM in rural and remote settings, patients from rural and remote areas. Does the digital infrastructure and access to smartphone allows that? Then another as important aspect was, objective was clinical outcomes. Third was patient compliance and motivation of the patients. And the fourth was possibility of early detection and prevention of complications. The, keeping these four things in mind, we ran the study from January 2024 to August 2024 and have some interesting observations. Apart from this, the project was very interesting for the doctor, Dr. Mandakini here, who is HOD in Department of Obstetrics in HGPGI Lucknow, because she, for her it was very important that uh, she was overburdened with WhatsApp messages and continuous disturbances throughout her day. So she wanted to give structure to her day. She wanted to give structure to her day without losing the human touch with her patients. And that was one of the other reasons why we started this uh, study and assessment of the project. There were three prime uh, areas uh, in the vision, the behavioral aspects of the patients, like how do they behave, uh, how do they use the technology, how do they interact and engage with the technology. There were clinical outcomes that we wanted to assess, of course, and there we wanted to see that how this technology can enable real-time data sharing and personalized care, along, uh, resulting to early detection of complications. And of course, we wanted to do a study. We wanted to understand a lot of things, and these are some of the points that I have already mentioned, that prevent conditions uh, from G GDM being chronic and identifying risk factors, along with en enabling early interventions. And I'll hand it over to Dr. Smith, but I would talk about this slide first. Uh, so this initiative that we took was not only a study in a, look, in a closed area, it was more than that. We started out like, our, like we just heard about policy advocacy. We started out from the top where we talked to the ambassador uh, between Denmark and India, uh, and he, he supported the project. He, uh, he created the environment from the policy making side to, to run this. We also had Dr. Banshi Sabu, uh, he, he, he has been our advisor, and I'm honored to you know, get uh, the advice and help from him and support from him. Uh, we also had a foreign ministry from Denmark involved in this, and then of course the project team from SGPGI. Uh, IIPHE was involved also in the formulation of the study and what should be the important points, uh, IIPHE meaning in Gandhinagar. And then IKDRC was also involved in consult consulting that what are important aspects of GDM monitoring. And that is why Dr. Smith is with me today. So I'll hand it over to Dr. Smith and you can talk about the project and the results. Dr. Smith, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you to Dr. Sabu, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, so the best thing you still can do for diabetes is to keep people from getting it. 
So the, these are the three agendas for the presentation. Uh, scope of the problem, why do we need to prevent it? And are there any strategies for prevention and how can we get our girls and women fit and ready for their pregnancy? So what is the, what are the scope of the problem? Uh, so this is the data from the Diabetes Atlas 10th edition that uh, overall the global prevalence for hyperglycemia in pregnancy is 16.7 percent. So that is a very high percentage and 80 percent percentage uh, are the proportion of cases due to GDM, gestational diabetes mellitus. And uh, this is another data from the atlas that it, uh, this shows that 28% uh, is the prevalence rate of South, uh, Southeast Asia population for hyperglycemia in pregnancy and that is the highest uh, among all other regions. So India accounts for about 1 in 7 of all adults living for the, with the diabetes worldwide. Uh, these are the risk factors. Uh, so family history is very important. Advanced gestational is, uh, age is a uh, risk factor. Gestational hypertension, family history, and then obesity and diet, and PCOS, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So why do we need to prevent it? So uh, this is a paper showing uh, why do we need to prevent it. So this shows that the hyperglycemic intrauterine environment appears to be involved in the pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes and prediabetes in adult offsprings of women with either diet treated GDM or type 1 diabetes during pregnancy. So the offsprings of around 1000 offsprings were tested and uh, the highest prevalence of hyperglycemia were found in the offsprings of uh, GDM mother or type 1 diabetic mother. And uh, there is a maternal pre, uh, there is a conclusion of this study that uh, maternal pre-pregnancy overweight is an independent risk factor for offsprings, overweight and abdominal obesity at the age of 16 years. These are, uh, the risks are highest in offsprings with concomitant prenatal exposure to maternal pre-pregnancy overweight and GDM. So 25% of all pregnancies are complicated by hyperglycemia in uh, Southeast Asia. So are there any uh, strategies for prevention? Uh, so what we can do is, uh, this is called uh, generational reprogramming, okay, how the first nine months shape the rest of uh, your life. So this, uh, these are the recommendation, optimizing the baby's birth weight, met, uh, managing maternal nutrition and weight gain, correction of any nutritional deficiency and postpartum follow up of the patient. Uh, the Finnish trial of uh, radial, uh, radial trial, they concluded that the moderate uh, individualized lifestyle intervention reduced the incidence of GDM by 39% in high risk pregnant women. And it was even more effective than uh, metformin over a period of three years. Uh, nutritional factors, they are also very important. So this is a systemic review paper which included eight clinical trials and 20 observational studies. They concluded that uh, some changes in uh, nutrition uh, that is including Mediterranean diet, including probiotic supplementation, during uh, pregnancy may reduce the uh, pre prevalence or uh, during or before the pregnancy may reduce the prevalence of GDM. Uh, this is the data of our pi pilot study which uh, we uh, conducted at SGPGI Lucknow. So 50 pregnant women from rural and remote areas were enrolled in the initial phase of the study. Uh, there the participants uh, used the Cordia platform to monitor key health metrics including weight, blood pressure, blood sugar, symptoms and exercise and data were collected. So we were able to uh, detect that is early detect, uh, detection of complications. So we were able to uh, detect three cases of hypertension, four cases of GDM and four cases of obstetric cholestasis via the proper follow-up and proper compliance of patients and doctor via this platform. This was the distribution of, uh, this was the distribution of health metrics at follow-up. Uh, 
द एवरेज वेट ऑफ पार्टिसिपेंट्स इंक्रीज प्रोग्रेसिवली ओवर द ट्वेल्व ट्वेल्व वीक्स फर्स्ट ट्राइमेस्टर विच मीन्स इंक्रीज ऑफ थ्री के जी फ्रॉम बेज लाइन टू द एंड ऑफ द स्टडी एंड सो वी कूड टिपिकली मैनेज पेशेंट्स न्यूट्रिशन एंड वेट वाय द प्लेटफॉर्म ब्लड प्रेशर वॉज ऑल्सो मैनेज वाय दिस एप्लीकेशन एंड I can talk about the qualitative aspect of the project. That what did our participants say? Uh, the first part uh, on the top, they are our patients uh, who uh, who participated in the project, and uh, uh, there were some chronic patients as well uh, who have uh, recommend uh, who send their testimonials uh, for the platform. But uh, most importantly, the opinion of Dr. Mandakini Pradhan. Uh, she mentioned that the early intervention according to the symptoms vitals and reports on the app it allowed me to share educational material and videos with the pa patients that was the, one of the most important key elements that we also hoped for would work for both the doctors and the patients and then uh, we had experts in involved from denmark as well who were uh, program manager for, who was program manager for telemedicine program in denmark in danish context but she had a great uh, testimony she uh, delivered a great testimonial as well for the project so uh, one important thing that i would like to highlight is before we end this presentation that this this initiative was really appreciated by the ambassador as well who was advocating for it and wants to it still wants to promote it in a larger on a larger scale uh, he said that this was an initiative in true spirit of service antuni ramaya and he knows this service anto niramaya because we we informed him or we told him about this uh, uh, phrase the if, right in the start when we got introduced to him and he has this very close to his heart and uh, with this spirit he always supports us as well so we are very uh, uh, pleased and proud to bring this uh, project study report with you and would also like to connect with you if you are interested to know more about it or in general you, you know chronic disease management using technology thank you so much thank you so much thanks